Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, coming to you from the overflow room with everything that's wrong in the world of Mahler. And I'm going to sum it up in two words. Fischer, Dusseldorf. Yes, this is a Mahler cycle. Some people have had nice things to say about it. I've had nice things to say about it. I wrote a very positive review of the Seventh Symphony and a reasonably negative review of the Second Symphony. Well, here's the Ninth. There's also a dust leaf from Erda that wasn't so hot. Listen, and more. I mean, there's, there's, there's more. They're doing a cycle. No. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, but no. This is wrong. This is the kind of thing that well, let me just tell you a story. When I was when I was a graduate student at Stanford University, I played in every community orchestra I could around the peninsula. And there was a lovely community orchestra. I think it was called the West Valley Symphony or something like that. Um, I don't recall exactly. But they were they were they were lovely, lovely people and they had a wonderful concert series that we played in a church and we had a great time. We did, we did some really zany programs that were lots and lots of fun. And they actually recorded all of the concerts and then sold the tapes to attendees at the concerts. It was a lovely souvenir of what I'm sure was an extremely pleasant and enjoyable afternoon for the people who attended. That's what this is. It's not something for international consumption. Now, I know, I know that there are people who think that every recording of any piece, no matter how many there are, no matter who does it, is inherently worthwhile. That's not true. <laughs> it's just not true. Most of those people are Bruckenerites, by the way. But it's absolutely crazy. Now, Fisher, Adam Fisher is a major conductor, serious conductor. He's done quite a bit of stuff that's been very good as his Mozart cycle on, on, on Da Capo, for example. He did Bartok on Nimbus. He's done, he did a whole Haydn Symphony series that was on Nimbus and Brilliant Classics and a hundred other labels. You know, the guy, the guy knows how to conduct. He's not a terrible Mahler conductor, except in a few spots here. And, and the Dusseldorf Symphony is a decent, regional or, or local orchestra. But Mahler deserves better. We have better. Better exists today. And as I said in my chat about, you know, other Mahler boxes, I am shocked by what I see, especially on the internet, by soi disant critics who must be like 12 years old who think that because they bought a CD and have an opinion, they know how to make comparisons and to give us intelligent perspectives on on performances of these works. These are iconic works now, and they've been played by the greatest orchestras and the greatest conductors. And if you haven't heard those performances, all I can say is shut up and leave the rest of us alone. It's crazy that we have to hear opinion from people who think that the Dussel the Dusseldorf Symphony Orchestra is a major a major orchestra in playing Mahler. They ain't. They ain't. Let's take this as a case in point, okay? Let's get down to brass tacks. We'll talk some specifics. First of all, the strings. There, there either aren't enough of them or they sound hopelessly, hopelessly thin. I mean, when the, when the, the big D minor theme at the beginning of the first movement, you know, ba -da, da -da 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 -boo, it's so feeble. My God. God, and the climaxes where you need to have the strings where Mahler marks, you know, hochst the craft, I mean, highest, strongest power, and the strings have to go, yeah, da, 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 da. You, you know what I mean. It, 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 they're just not there. And so what do you think is going to happen in the adagio, in the finale? I mean, come on, folks. It's just, it's, it's just, it's not right. It just isn't right. Now, do they miss notes? No. Do they play with commit commitment and conviction? Yes, they do. I'm not saying that it's not a good effort. I'm not saying that anybody who was there on the night wouldn't have come away thinking they got their money's worth. You know, it was a pleasant evening at the symphony. It's not an international release. 
And one of the things you need to keep in mind is that the Dusseldorf Symphony Orchestra, of course, is very proud of this series, I'm sure, and with reason, because their competition is not the Berlin Philharmonic, and it's not the New York Philharmonic, and it's not the Amsterdam Concertgebouw, and it's not the Czech Philharmonic, and it's... Uh, their competition is Dortmund. <laughs> Their competition is the guy next door who they want to do better than. So they got their resources together and they put this series together and somehow financed it. And good for them. I, I, they should be proud of their achievement in managing to do it. But you can't, you can't delude yourself into thinking that this is a great Mahler orchestra. They're very average. They're, that's all they are very average. And then, then that's not even talking about Fisher. Fisher, unfortunately, has some ideas about how Mahler's Ninth ought to go. This is always a mistake. Even in Dusseldorf, he would have been better if he would just leave them alone and let them play. But no, he can't do that. So let's do a little bit about this, the performance itself. The first movement. First movement's just too fast. 25 minutes is not necessarily too fast, but it depends on how you do the sections. And Fisher seems to be rushing through all of the slower music. It's really strange, especially right at the opening. You know, the theme and the accompaniment seem somehow detached from each other. And aside from the weakness in the climaxes, you know, it's just, it just has, it has, it has urgency without passion, urgency without intensity, because the orchestra doesn't have the balls to really peg the climaxes. And in the soft moments, the horns are one of the orchestra's weaker, weaker sections. And I don't mean weak like they're missing notes. I mean weak like in terms of dynamics and articulation. And you know, especially in the first movement, there are all those moments where you have muted horns and stopped horns, and they're doing all kinds of things at low volume. And it's very hard sometimes to sustain the tone. So that means that the atmosphere is missing in some of those creepy interludes. Oh, it's just so disappointing. And then we get to the second movement, which is completely twisted. It is such a mess. You know, the second movement consists of three dances, each in their own tempo. And the second one, which is which is a grotesque waltz, is supposed to accelerate slightly each time you hear it. Well, it's impossible to hear any of that in this performance because no two phrases happen at the same tempo. There are not three tempos in this movement in Fisher's hands. There are about 26 tempos in Fisher's hands. And you've heard most of them in the first dance. <laughs> so by the time you get to the waltz and then you've got supposedly a landler, a relaxing landler that comes next, it's, it's all a jumble. It's just dreadful. Now, the Rondo Burlesque, well, they play it. I mean, they manage to do it. It's one of those clear, um, transparent performances that just lacks the bite. The woodwinds need to snap and snarl and be vicious and mean and nasty. And then at the end, when you get to the stretto, that is the really fast successive accelerations, Fisher tries to do a Bernstein, you know, where he, he holds up on the, the brass refrains. Boom, boom, but it up, cha cha cha, but it up, but it up. He just doesn't do it very well. You know, Bernstein does with the concerto valve. There's a difference between a first-class orchestra and a genius conductor and Adam Fisher with the Dusseldorf Symphoniker, the Dusseldorfer Symphoniker. I mean, I, I, I can go on. And then, like I said, there's a finale with the anemic strings sounding more anemic than ever. I, I just wish that these people had devoted their time and attention to playing some really interesting music that needs the attention that needs the promotion, that needs advocacy, instead of doing yet another Mahler cycle. Now, I don't blame them in the sense that as my YouTube analytics <laughs> prove, when you talk about Mahler, your traffic goes up. Mahler is a big deal today. He really is, like Bruckner and a few names, Beethoven and Mozart. You know, these are the names that get the attention. I understand. I understand. So let them do it. Admire them, as I do, for their pluck and courage. Castigate the conductor for doing some really stupid things. Right here, right? Abnormal is fine. Stupid is not. Yes. I mean, he does some really stupid things here. But, my God, at least know what great Mahler playing is. 
and great molar conducting. So you don't fool people into thinking that they're getting a top quality product by rooting for the underdog. You're not. You're not. If it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. This is a duck. Keep on listening, folks. Thanks for joining me. Take care.